about the, the, the Saudi lobby in the US, but we know that it's present. Anyone who's been in academia knows how difficult it is to write a critique of Saudi Arabia in the United States because of the endowed chairs that the Saudi government supports here. You're one of maybe a handful of scholars who've, who have written anything. We also see uh, in Mohammed bin Salman's recent PR tour of the US, uh, this, this sort of close relationship with, with government, Washington DC, media, uh, Silicon Valley. Can you speak to how the, the, the Saudi alliance functions in the US? Well, I mean, there's one level where there are the, the, the actual professional lobbyists. Um, Saudi Arabia spends billions of dollars uh, and the Emirates and actually now Qatar has as well, on lobbyists, um, there are about 100 lobbyists registered as lobbying on behalf of the Saudi government right now, um, so, and, and that's public information. But the other level, uh, we cannot ignore the fact that the, the Saudi royalty is also have the title of the guardians of the holy sites, Mecca and Medina. And they, uh, that's a, a very powerful moral position that you can leverage and they do leverage. Now, that coupled with the venues for funding through Saudi Arabia, um, don't necessarily through, go through the government directly, in other words, if you are starting some type of organization or opening up an Islamic center or whatever in the US, usually your best financers, your best sources of raising funds will be people from Saudi Arabia that are donating money with the approval of the government, but it's not officially coming from the government. And it's, um, they would not dare donate to anything that the government doesn't approve of, but at the same time, the money is not leveraged directly. Up until 9-11, very few Muslims dared say anything critical about the Saudi ruling family uh, because simply of ostracism, if not direct violence, uh, it was a very open secret that the Saudis had funded numerous institutions, Muslim institutions in the West, um, and these institutions were not going to give you a, a platform if you will be critical of Saudi Arabia. That type of, uh, um, um, that was broken a bit, the, 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 the shield that uh, against criticism constructed by Saudi Arabia was, was cracked a bit after 9-11 where through critiques of Wahhabism, people started accepting critiques against Saudi Arabia. What in the past five years, there has been a very aggressive thrust by Saudi Arabia to restore that sense of, um, what is the word I'm looking for, um, a, a halo around the Saudi ruling family so that people would feel that if they critique the Saudi royal family, then they're also critiquing the guardian of the holy sites and they're critiquing, they're, they're un, if not committing a major sin, then unrisking falling into some major sin. Um, I mean, so this, in, in his last khutbah, came right out and said, called the crown prince divinely inspired and, and even said that the crown prince, uh, he quoted the prophet, uh, the, the uh, a report attributed to the prophet that God sends a reformer to rejuvenate the Islamic faith every hundred years. And he said, well, that's the crown prince, Salman. So we should all celebrate the, the, the savior of the Islamic faith for the century has been now revealed. Um, 
you know, that position towards the holy sites plus the finances gives them an, an amazing amount of influence. What has materialized in the past, since around in, in the past five years especially, is the threat of physical violence and abductions, with, which I believe that the Emiratis and the Saudis have become far more vulgar about. And um, of course, the election of Trump has given them a sense of immunity. And, and um, that's, for those of us who live in this world, is quite frightening. 